In this segment, I want to talk about camera and depth of field. We've already created a camera for our JBL speaker, but I want to go ahead and create a new one for this example. So from our view menu, down to lights and cameras, we're going to add a camera. Now this specific camera, I want to focus on the back section and I want to zoom in to our logo. So as we're looking at this, I'm going to place my focus close to that logo and get my camera positioned appropriately. As I'm looking at this model, I want to go all the way down to my depth of field options and my camera properties, and I want to move my clipping planes so that the center plane or the focal plane is going to be located on my JBL logo. So we want to go ahead and drag these to get them close to the right position. So as we move our model around, you can see where the focal plane is and how close it is to our logo. Now remember, you can use the shift keys or control keys to change the different steps when you're rotating this around. If you hold down the Alt key, it's going to go in increments of one millimeter. So that allows you to get pretty close to your target. And then we want to pull in the clipping planes. I want to make them pretty tight. And what this is going to do is it's going to blur anything outside of those planes. So what this means for us is this section right here where the JBL logo is just starting to appear on the model is going to be blurry and everything past this is going to be blurry. Now keep in mind our camera view is a fairly small object, so the depth of field may be hard to discern, but we'll take our best shot at it. Once we say OK, I want to go to my new camera view, camera 2. Before I render, I'm going to take a look at my options. And I'm actually going to minimize the size of my output. The smaller the output, the quicker the render will be. We can also take a look at our preview render quality and our final render quality. I'm going to go ahead and set this to better. And I'm going to make sure that direct caustics and bloom are turned on. I'm going to leave the settings as default. Then I want to take a look at the final render. When we look at the final render, it'll go through the preview render first and then start to complete the final render. You can see that the edge of our speaker is blurry, and even the edge of our decal is blurry. Our focal point is right in the center, and you can't really tell here because the decal's on white background, but if we look over to the left-hand corner, you can see that it's getting more pixelated, it looks blurrier. If we make this image back to 100%, it's a little bit more apparent that the information over here is blurry. This is also a great technique if we want to create a new camera. So again, lights and cameras, add camera. In the new camera, we want to focus on some detail in the front. For instance, the button, maybe the LED. We can take a close-up look at this information, use our clipping planes, and focus on a certain area. So we need to slightly move our center clipping plane by holding down the Alt key and moving our slider so that it's centered and located on this button. Oftentimes, you'll have to zoom in on these smaller models to make sure that you're getting the right information. Then we want to leave these small clipping planes at 6 millimeter offset. Say OK and take a look at our new camera 3. Again, we'll do a final render and take a look at the end result. Using depth of field is great when you want to blur the lines between your model and the environment. This is very important when you're using more detailed environments, such as the courtyard environment that's provided by SolidWorks. The surrounding imagery is usually fairly blurry. And if you stick a nice, clean, crisp render in the middle of that courtyard, that information is not going to look like it belongs there. It's not going to look realistic. So oftentimes, it's important to focus on certain section of your model and have the rest of it blur.